Uh, I wanna welcome you to this session four and we'll go to our first speaker who is Kristen Beck. Kristen is the lead bioinformatician uh, at AI and cognitive software at IBM. And she'll be talking about rapid analysis of SARS-CoV-2 genomic content using a functional genomics platform. I want to begin, of course, by thanking the organizers of this um, amazing conference. I think it's so uh, excellent to be able to bring people together and share information for researchers and scientists. And I know to the general population and all those families in their living room that are watching this as well. So a huge thank you for that um, and the introduction as well. My name is Kristen Beck. I'm the lead bioinformatician um, for AI and cognitive software. I hail from the IBM Almaden Research Lab. So IBM Research um, is a place where we get to do kind of some really neat and crazy and inspiring things. Um, and, and our goal really is also to help make the world a better place. And so what I'm gonna share with you today is some of the research that we've done over the last several weeks in response to COVID-19 um, in an effort to help and to help provide our expertise in genomics um, and capabilities for the research community. So one of the things that we've observed over the last several weeks is that um, as the virus itself has been spreading rapidly, the amount of available sequence data is also growing in a, in a ver at a very fast rate. Um, this data was pulled um, as of yesterday, um, looking at the total amount of sequence deposited over time, and we're seeing thousands of available sequence data. Um, this magnitude of data, um, as well as the rapid rate with which it is created, indicates that applications to process that data must keep pace. Um, and in order to do that, they must scale in an automated way in a way that brings um, important points of that data together. On the right-hand side is a, a plot generated through the Next Strain platform um, with great acknowledgement to their work at this time, um, indicating from them and other researchers that we see that this virus is mutating typically about twice per month. Um, and that in itself will re reveal previously unseen variants. So the amount of data is growing, the virus itself is changing, and that really forces um, a, a unique computational time. The viral genomic sequence itself, this contains the molecular targets that are going to be used to develop antivirals, vaccines, and rapid diagnostic tests. So those sub-regions of this genome and the diversity that they have are what will actually be able to um, help us slow and kill this virus. Um, for the last several years um, through IBM Research, we've been working on a platform um, that was formerly called Omicsware. It's now called the Functional Genomics Platform, and its roots originated in bacterial genome analysis, um, really to support the microbiome. Uh, the repository itself has been a collection of over um, 200,000 bacterial genomes. And then beyond their genomes, we've annotated the phenotypes, so annotating all of their genes, the proteins and functional domains. And together that data collection delivers the biological activity that the system could have. We put this together in a way that's a bit of a paradigm shift from how traditional bioinformatics is being done. So instead of having um, bot files on disk, we put this into a structured relational database. And what that allows is that these data types are um, connected automatically through the ingestion and processing that we do, such that you can observe a functional domain that does a specific enzymatic activity, map that back to its genome of origin, and go beyond that. The data itself is surfaced through a web browser, but also a developer toolkit that includes the Python SDK, Docker container, and REST APIs. And really over the last um, several weeks when um, the, the global pandemic became I mean, just, I don't even know, paramount size, really. I think it caught a lot of our attention in a much bigger way than it had, unfortunately, at this point. Um, we shifted in what we were doing, and we said, how can we come together and how can we help in this nature? And um, to that extent, we um, wanted to look at the COVID-19 genomic information that was available. And so we brought a task force together, I think it was on a Tuesday, um, and the next day we had a corpus of genomes, uh, about 100 at the time, and I passed that over to uh, the lead architect of our system, um, Ed Siebels. And by the time we were drinking coffee the next morning, we had analyzed all the genes, proteins, and functional domains. And not only did we have the data, but it was easy to get to, queryable, and structured. That in itself, this data is what's gonna comprise all these molecular targets for health interventions to be able to slow and kill the virus. 
since that point, we realized how tremendous this capability is and expanded this even further. So since that point, we've processed over 25,000 viral genomes from GenBank and GISAD, which are uh, tremendous um, aggregates of data of this type, including SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 genomes, as well as SARS and MERS genomes, um, which provides a comparative capability when to look at other outbreaks. Um, as part of uh, this capability in this platform, IBM is actually offering this cloud-based capability to researchers who are also working on COVID-19. Um, they can request access at ibm.biz slash functional genomics. Um, and we hope that by providing this data, we'll be able to accelerate researchers um, and also provide an excellent set of data to build AI and machine and deep learning applications on top of this. To give you just a peek of what data we already have in the system, um, on the left-hand side here is the total counts of data for different biological entities. For example, the genomes, genes, proteins, and domains of the viral data, all of our virus corpus. On the right-hand side is the specific counts for SARS-CoV-2. You can see we have over 3,100 genomes to date. This was pulled live this morning. Um, 3,000 genes and 2,600 pro proteins and 4,300 domains. And at the same time, what we're able to do by looking at data of this magnitude in a structured manner as it is, we can start to look at the emerging variants. So on the left-hand side, you have a contrast of gene um, distinct counts, the unique uh, count of sequences, as well as the redundant counts. Um, so that gives you the distribution of variants that we're already seeing emerge in the population of these genomes. On the right-hand side, I've contrasted for specific uh, proteins, the total count of distinct proteins, and then also um, the redundant count. So you can see, for example, that replicates polyprotein 1A um, has an increased amount of variance compared to replicates, replicates polyprotein 1AB. Um, for, mm -hmm. spike, for spike glycoprotein, which is involved in host cell invasion, at the same time, you see hundreds of variants um, the collection of these variants itself is crucial as we think about building um, antivirals, vaccines, et cetera, because the um, affinity and the specificity for these molecular interactions um, will be keen to their um, uh, effectiveness. Um, on the bottom is a enriched motif that we're starting to observe in the spike glycoprotein and, and show just a little bit of a snippet as to what we can actually provide. Um, I'll take. Uh, I'll go ahead and wrap with that. Um, just to uh, invite you to come and access the data and to collaborate with us and to um, be able to provide this collection of data for the research community. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kristen, uh, for for that overview of the genomic analysis.